Hey everyone, in this video we're going to create an EC2 instance on AWS. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just go to our regions and I'm going to select something that's in Europe. So I'm going to select London. We can see this tab here where it shows us our recent activity on AWS. So EC2 is just there, but if that isn't there for you, you can also search for many different services. So there, I think AWS, the last time I checked, it had like almost three, th almost 300 services or something like that. And it probably, it, it could even be more than that now at this stage. So if we just type in EC2, EC2 is Amazon's version of virtual machines. So if you used like, you know, virtual box on your laptop, or you've used like the Google Cloud platform, they just call it VMs, EC2 is, is the exact same thing. So once we get to this stage, we can see we have zero instances running here. We have basically, we have zero of, of everything apart from the default security group. So we're gonna launch an instance, which is just a way of saying we're gonna create one. Um, now we're gonna call this something so we'll just say we we'll just call it YouTube and um, it doesn't the name doesn't really matter now here you can see there's a quick start section and then there's also a section where you can browse more AMIs as they call them and AMIs is just Amazon's machine images so for example let's say you want to use an operating system maybe you want to use like Ubuntu or Red Hat Linux but you also wanted to have a graphical user interface or you want some dependencies already downloaded on it maybe you want Ubuntu with Python and also some GUI and maybe you also want Node installed on it so that's a little bit different than the standard version of Ubuntu you would get by just selecting this well, you can go to browse the AMIs and you'll probably find something uh, that's pretty similar. So you'll find like a default Ubuntu image that has Docker on it, if that's what you want. You'll find a Ubuntu image that has, you know, let's say Docker and Kubernetes and, you know, Node and all these, all these type of things. You mightn't get exactly what you want, but you'll definitely get something um, a bit better than just a standard image that rather than start from scratch. Anyway, we're going to select Ubuntu for our example today. We're just going to go with the, the standard version of it. You get to select what type of one here. So we want to go for the free tier eligible one. So we can have version 22 or version 20. I'm just going to go with 20 because it's a little bit older and a little bit more stable maybe. Um, you can select the architecture this doesn't really matter you know uh, for most people anyway this is going to be Intel x86 this is going to be ARM we're going to go with the Intel one then again this is the type of instance you have so this is just like the size do you want a really small one or do you want a really big one and you can see they go up to quite large uh, like some of these here are look at this this has like 48 CPUs it has you know almost 400 gigabytes of memory and you know that one's got almost 200 30 64 um, yeah so there's some pretty beefy uh, machines if that's what you need but for the free tier we actually get a little bit better than the T2 Nano we do get the T2 Micro which has one CPU and it has one gigabyte of RAM, which it'll be fine for like, you know, hosting like a website or something simple like that. But if you were to do a lot of processing or anything like that, then it, it's not really usable, to be honest with you. But it, it's a good starting point. Um, you know, most, most of us that are like using the free tier of AWS, we're not building out real heavy infrastructure. We're just trying to get a little bit more familiar with the platform and how to access resources and things like that. Now one thing you will need is a key pair and that's to log into your server. 
So if you want to SSH into your server or something like that, in the past you may have used like a username and password or something like that, but you can also use a key pair, which is just a big long string of numbers and letters, but it's much more secure. So we're going to create one here. I'm just going to say Ryan's key uh, with an S. Um, we'll go with that or SA dot PEM and we're going to create that key. So you can see we're, we've downloaded this key which is just really like a password on our on our computer here. So now that we've got that allow SSH traffic from anywhere that's what the um, this 0.0.0, .0 is about. You could say I only want it to be accessed by let's say me, like my particular public IP address, you can do that, that's obviously safer, um, but then that means that nobody else will be able to, so like if you want to share this box with your friend or, or someone like that, they'll not, able to, they'll not be able to access it. And if we scroll down here a bit, we can see this is SSD, yeah, that's fine. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. There's some other advanced settings, but for us, I don't think we need to worry about them. I think that should be I think that should be us. Okay, I'm going to launch this instance, and it usually takes like a couple of minutes. So you can see, it says it's successfully initialized the launch of the instance, but it's it's not actually ready yet. And you'll see that in a minute if we go back to our instances you see it has a state here so the instance state is pending so once it's pending uh, I think there's a yeah so once it's pending there's basically nothing happening and then it may go to oh it's gone to running already um, I I thought at one stage it went to like a initializing or something like that stage and then it went to a running stage but that was that was pretty quick um, I've seen it been a bit slower in the past but that's pretty quick and you can see we've got this public IPv4 address as well. So that's what we'll be calling when we want to go and SSH into our server. So now that that's running, let's copy this public IP address on here and let's go to our terminal. So once we copy this, we'll go to our terminal. And if we do a sudo ssh-i and then the path of our uh, key that we have. So I think we call it Ryan's Ryan's key. So it's that. And then we want to put in our username and at our IP address. The default user for Ubuntu is Ubuntu, I'm pretty sure. And then we need to do Ubuntu at, and then that IP address that we've copied. And I think that should work. The only problem I can see with that is the actual key. So I think we have to do a chmod on the key, but I'm gonna just enter this. Uh, okay, so that might work. Okay, it did work. And you'll be prompted like this if you wanna continue. So you'll say yes. I actually thought that the key that we downloaded might need like uh, a change of permissions. So if you have any issues around your key, do this command, do like ch mod and then like do a plus x like this and then the you know the name of the key. So in my case it would be um, Ryan's key or do a ch mod 777 or 400. Anyway, don't worry about that. That's just if you're running into some issues doing what I just did there, try those couple of things out first and that should hopefully get you sorted. So this terminal actually looks like, you know, it looks like the one that we were looking at there a minute ago, um, but it's actually not because you can see it's Ubuntu at and then this thing here, it's got this 172 and if we go back to this here, we can see this is 172, ends in 72, this ends in 72. So now we're actually in our machine. So if I did something like uh, apt, if I did an 
if I do a sudo apt uh, update and run that, you can see it's it's updating. That's a that's a, that's a Ubuntu command right there. So we're we're updating our system. If I was to control C on that, that would cancel it. But you know we can do an ls, we can do a pwd, see exactly where we are. We can also leave it by just typing exit, and now you can see we're back into this here. We're back on my MacBook, and that's all there is to creating a new EC2 and being able to access it on our local machine. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe so I can see you in the next one.